and animation. Invasive species. You've probably heard the term, but what exactly does it mean? And how is it different than terms like non-native species or pests? Great question. Come along with us as we explore these different terms. First, a little sneak peek into invasive species. Invasive species include plants and animals, both in water and on land. They are found in many places, including national parks. They threaten the Park Service mission to preserve unimpaired America's natural and cultural resources. So what makes a plant or animal invasive? Does it have to do with a certain amount of damage, or is it just a species that left its own habitat? Let's talk about some other definitions, like native and non-native, before we dive into the big question. Native species. These are all organisms that have occurred, now occur, or may occur without human intervention. One example is the white-footed mouse. It's native throughout the eastern United States. When found in nature, the mouse is an integral part of the ecosystem. A mouse appears on a U.S. map. Non-native species. These are species that do not occur naturally in an area, but are introduced as a result of a deliberate or accidental human activity. Most importantly, they exist where they have not naturally occurred and may even be considered beneficial under certain circumstances. One example you may recognize is the bell pepper. It's not native to the United States, but it currently presents no threat to native plants. People harvest a bell pepper crop. Now it's finally time to explore invasive species. Invasive species are non-native species that cause harm to the environment, cultural resources, infrastructure, economy, human safety and health, as well as plant and animal health. One example is kudzu. Kudzu was introduced to the United States in 1876 at an exposition in Philadelphia. It can grow up to a foot a day, allowing it to easily outcompete and kill other plants. It even grows over power lines and poles, causing damage that results in the loss of power to communities. Vines consume a yard. Now you may be thinking, where do pests fit into all of this? Great question. Let's bring back our old friend, the white-footed mouse. As we said earlier, the white-footed mouse is a native species throughout the eastern United States when found in nature. But when found in and around structures, the mouse poses significant threats to resources and human health, and it's considered to be a pest. A pest is any organism that interferes with management objectives or threatens human health or safety. A pest can be native or non-native. All invasive species are pests, but not all pests are invasive species. Confused? For instance, a feral swine is non-native because it did not originate in the U.S., a pest because it causes damage to a variety of resources, and it's invasive both because it's non-native and causes harm. A chart appears. On the other hand, the white-footed mouse is native because it comes from the U.S. and may be a pest if it causes damage or health issues, but it's not invasive because it is native. Check marks list various organisms as native, non-native, invasive, and pest. Phew! We threw you a lot of information in a short amount of time. Find out how you can help prevent the spread of invasive species by visiting go.nps.gov slash preventinvasives. A few tips to help prevent the spread of invasive species to our national parks. Don't move firewood. Use local firewood. Thoroughly rinse your gear and pressure wash your recreation vehicles on site. Don't keep invasive species as pets. Clean your shoes or boots. Illustrated by Karina Branson. Narrated by Brittany Connell. Edited by Mackenzie Reed. A logo, National Park Service.